anyone that does a little bit of research is going to realize that you can get into digital without breaking the bank. So why would you go analog? Yeah, yeah, bro. Oh! <laughs> I dropped it. Now this part's important as well. We've got Stickman Steve in the field and you actually own some of these products we're talking about today. You've flown with these goggles a lot. Do you have your own Radio Master Pocket? I do. Do you have your own Mobula 8? With walk snail. Okay, yeah, yep. so basically this exact kit. Yep. So what do you think about this whole thing combined? Like, hey. you've got the set of goggles, which you don't have a set of these, because you've got a different pair of goggles, but for somebody coming in, getting into the hobby, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, awesome way to start. Pocket is like my go-to for my micros when I'm traveling, things like that. Awesome little thing. Uh, the goggles, I used to run the VRX on the Sky Zones. Got the V1 Avatar goggles now, yep. much better. I think these, without a bit more testing, are probably comparable, if not better, to the V1s in terms of range, okay. picture and everything. Yeah, we've taken these quite a long we way. Have, like, yeah. I'm even using these now in some of my review videos when I'm testing a radio. You will see me using these goggles because they. I really feel like I'm getting some fantastic reception. Yeah, yeah. reception. Yeah. It's blowing me away. So coming in, starting on the little micros and things, you know, going from a Beta FPV Cetus kit, yep. which was absolute trash to the Mobula 7s, Mobula 8s, Mob Lights and things like that with analog. And now having the option to go walk snail for so cheap. The 1S kit, I don't even know what it is, US 80 bucks or yeah, something. Some, yep. Straight onto a frame with a good pair of goggles like this, which are 200 US. Yep. Hey, why wouldn't you? Like, okay. If you started tomorrow, here, here, here's probably the question that I want the answer to. If you started tomorrow, what would you get? Knowing what I know about walks. Uh, okay, well, I should say you, uh, <laughs> I should mention too, like you're not into as in FPV, you're kind of on the fence, right? So back mm -hmm. in the day, without knowing all the spec and the reviews and everything we've done, yep. what would you think you would choose today? If you're coming brand new, just an everyday pilot into the hobby? I think anyone that does a little bit of research is going to realize that you can get into digital without breaking the bank. Yep. So why would you go analog? Yep. If you get that picture clarity, you know, if, if you're all about just having fun, flying around with a good picture. You'd say so you choose those goggles? I'll choose probably these, definitely these okay. to get into it. Radio? Yeah, this or something similar. Okay, but, but when you say similar, what else would you choose? Um, something small like a Zorro or something, but I love the Radio Master Pocket. Yep. I really do. It's done everything I want it to do. But you've actually purchased your own one, a brown one? Yep. yep. All right, and what about uh, for a beginner, just using a little a quad like this? Again, being a beginner, these come in a bind and fly. Okay. I've put this one together. It's it's had a few flight controllers and things but you can get the walk snail mobula 8 as a bind and fly which will go straight with the radio like this straight to these goggles cheapest chips okay why here's, here's a good, why would you get this over like a five inch because a lot of viewers might be saying why did you choose that instead of like a nazgul or something like that or a, a tiny tiny whoop why have you chosen this do you think as well because we agreed on this we're gonna do less damage okay like if you do crash into stuff i like most people started off just flying around a little bit tentatively in the house you know knocking over the wife's vases and things like that yep yep this just cops a beating you know and you, you're not going to do much damage the parts are relatively cheap motors and things like it's quite robust for what it is but you've also got that 2s power it just hooks if you want it to you can, yeah, yeah you can still do a bit of freestyle a bit of 100%. fun especially if you're learning yep. so um yeah the only other thing i've done is chuck on an external receiver to get a bit more range yep but that's it. All right, let's do it. Should we just have a bit of fun? Yeah, throw man. some footage? Because that's what it's all about, just having fun, getting you guys flying. And like, this is the kit that I would choose if I was starting tomorrow. It's the kit Steve would choose as well. So I think it's uh, it's just all about having fun and easy way to get up and get flying and without breaking the bank with an awesome experience. And something as well I should mention, you can still upgrade, like if you buy these goggles and eventually down the road you want to upgrade, they're still great ride along goggles. You can still get people to tune in, see an awesome vision of like HD yep. fed back to your face. I use my pocket radio all, the time. all the time. I use it all, it's probably my radio that I have the most hours on. And you got one of those weird ones with the arm switch. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have different arm switch sides. And the mob, like just a fun little quad that's been around for a while. It hooks and you can still fly it indoors if you want to, or still practice some fun outdoor freestyling. All right, ready to have some fun? Yeah. Would you buy this as a kit? If there was a kit like this, I 100% would. I've gone out and bought everything separately. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, you've seen, even in this wind, what have we got today? Yeah. 20, 30 knot wind gusts? Yeah, it's crazy. And you can still fly a little 2S, 2-inch yeah. micro. I, I think that's important too. Before this video, these are products we've been using. That's we've right. been using them for a long time. You've bought the radio. Yeah. You've bought the Mob 8. Yep. And now that we've got the, we've had more expensive walk snail systems. Yeah. But this as an entry option is spectacular. And I still use this. Like, I still use this yeah. all the time. It's awesome. All right. The best 
way to get flying in 2024. Like this is your digital option. This is what you should get. And you would have seen I did the Radio Master Pocket. Uh, we did the Walk Snail as well. And we also had this bad boy. It was my drone of choice. This is the Mobula 8. And if we look at some of the comments in that video, a lot of people were saying, hey, maybe you should go DJI. Maybe, um, you know, I don't like the Mob 8 and all those sorts of things. But here's what I would say to you. This kit right here, I use this radio all the time. I absolutely love it. It like comes with me. It's in my backpack all the time. If you have ever thought about jumping into the hobby, you want to get a radio that is, I'm going to say going to last. Like I use it more than any other radio that I've got. It doesn't have the biggest wattage. It's not made for long range or anything else like that. But like 99% of my flights, I'm doing on this radio right here. It's cheap, it doesn't break the bank, and if you, it connects up to my SIM, like, is what I, this is what I stand for. This is what I believe in, a product that can get people having an awesome time without having to drop like two, three, four, five hundred dollars on a radio. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with those better ones or more expensive ones, but this is what I wanna use, and I'm sure a lot of people in the chat as well will say, you know what, if it works and you're having an awesome time, that's, that's what's important. Um, Moving on, the same thing as well can sort of be said about these FPV goggles right here. So the Cadex Walks Now goggles, they're not perfect. Like there's a lot of features that they could add or that they're missing, but I feel like a lot of those things are extra features that aren't necessarily the important part. When it comes to FPV, first and foremost, you want a pair of goggles that is comfortable on your face. You're gonna get, I guess, amazing performance with, you can fly around with them all day. It's easy to use. It might not have, this might not have the bells and whistles of a whole bunch of other goggles out there. It might not have the extreme image quality of DJI or like perfect for the races or anything like that, but for what it does and for its price, it is outstanding. And I think it was really important when Steve said a little comment and I asked him, if this is all you could ever fly, would it be enough? And I 100% agree with Stickman Steve, and yes, it is. This right here, it's a pair of goggles, and it does its one job well. It doesn't have all the extra super bells and whistles that are finished or anything like that. Does it fly well? I get great range with it, and I've been doing range tests with it as well, which uh, I have a video which you might have seen. I kind of maybe broke NDA <laughs> a tiny bit. I shouldn't have had that in that video, but you will see I am range testing with these and doing some cool stuff and it is just outstanding vision. And then here's the part where probably people get a little bit upset about, but the Mobula 8, for me, it is a drone that offers a lot uh, for you people coming into the hobby. Would this be my personal choice day in, day out? I actually prefer to fly something like the Lightning V1 uh, but I didn't want to make that in the video because I had to desolder like the VTX, so, like the manual VTX, I had to install, there's not too much room in there. This just works out of the box. You can still have heaps of fun with it. You can still rip it around indoors. You can still fly this thing around outdoors. And that's what it's all about, like just having an awesome time when it comes to FPV and getting flying. So if you are a person watching this stream, if you're a person watching this and you've ever thought about jumping in, they're my recommendations for a brand new beginner. Yes, you can do some other things. Like you could, if you know you don't want to fly around indoors, fly around with this, fly around with this and just change the drone up. Get like a five inch Nazgul or something like that. If you are committed to, I only want to do outdoor flying and all that sort of stuff. But for me, the little Mobula, it was awesome. I really liked it. My friends use it. Raven uses it. Stickman Steve uses it. I use it. It's a cool drone that uh, I've had a lot of fun with. So there's my recommendation. If you haven't seen that video or you want to jump into FPV, it really is, in my opinion, the best way to start and just have an awesome time. If you were starting to fly FPV, uh, what would you get today? Because I know that's exactly the kit I would buy. Like if I wasn't a YouTuber, if I wasn't doing this for my job and I just want to get up and get flying, that is the kit that I think is going to service the most people and that's that's exactly what I'd want to fly. All right, Kiz Bartlett is saying, same as me, the TX16S is gathering dust now. I use the T-Lite. I'm actually tempted to sell uh, the TX16S for Azoro. Brandon is saying, I live, uh, I, I think he means I love the Boxer, but if I had the pocket, it would, I'd have so much more room in my drone pack, backpack. That's exactly right. Uh, it's really easy to, I guess, transport this anywhere. And a lot of, look, I don't do this because it's so small anyway, but one of the little benefits that people might not know about the pocket radio in the back right here, you actually have these little stick end parts. So you can, I think it just clips in. I am 99% sure it clips in. There we go, yes. 
So you can just clip your stick ends in the back right here if you really want a really low profile radio when you're putting it in your backpack or something like that. And Render's saying, boxer all the way, I want to pick up a pocket for tiny whoops. And, and look, Stickman Steve, he's got a boxer. He's got a pocket and I would say he uses his, it sort of just depends what he's bounded up to. I'm not sure if he actually has a preference on which one he prefers, but I know he takes his pocket radio everywhere, especially when he's traveling for work and things like that. It's just so easy uh, to get out and get flying. Uh, a little shout out here to, uh, you know, my friend Donny as well, Donny FPV, who sent me a mug, so thanks very much Donny. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.